In the first section, we will discuss about the anatomy and physiology of the heart. Let us look at the heart closely. If you look at the outside of the heart, we can see this is the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. If you look at the interior of the heart, we can see this is the right atrium, the blood will flow through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and then up to the pulmonary artery, go to the pulmonary circulation and then it will come back to the left atrium through the mitral valve to the left ventricle and then through the aortic valve go up to the aorta to various parts of the body. Firstly, we will discuss the right atrium. The sinoatrial lobe region is in the right atrium is generally located in the high right atrium posterior to the crystal terminalis. Normally, it makes the heart beat 60 to 100 times per minute. And here is the AV node region. This atrial ventricular node is the only normal electrical connection between upper and lower chambers of the heart. Here, the picture depicts the Cox triangle. The Cox triangle are boundaries by the tendon of the todaro, the tricuspid valve leaflet, and also the coronary sinus. The AV node is located at the anterior aspect of the triangle. There are two structures that worth, worth mentioning in the right atrium. The first is the fossa ovalis. This is a thin layer of tissue formed shortly after birth. It provides access to the left atrium using special instruments. When we do the transeptal puncture, we aim to puncture this site and go from the right atrium to the left atrium. The other structure worth mentioning in the right atrium is the coronary sinus osteum. It provides access to the base of the left atrium and ventricle without requiring an arterial puncture. And it is the site where the left ventricular leads will enter through. For the left atrium, it is situated in the posterior aspect of the heart. Here you can see there are four pulmonary veins drains into the left atrium. The right superior pulmonary ring, the right inferior pulmonary ring, the left superior pulmonary ring, and the left inferior pulmonary ring. These rings are especially important when we do the radiofrequency ablation of the atrial fibrillation. After the atrium, let's look at the ventricle. Let's first look at the right ventricle. Here, the right atrium drains the blood into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. This is the anterior cups, medial cups, and the posterior cups. And this is the right ventricle. This is the right ventricular apex. And here is the right ventricular alpha tract. Later in the lectures, we will point out that the right ventricular lead may be anchored or paste in the right ventricular apex or in the right ventricular alpha tract. And here is the left ventricle. The blood drains from the left atrium to the left ventricle through the mitral valve. And here is the posterior cups and anterior cups of the mitral valve with the papillary muscle and the cordy tendini. When we look at the internal cardiac anatomy, we should look that there's a continuous septum from the base to the apex, separate right from the left. In the atrium, there is the interatrial septum, separates the atria, and in the ventricle, there is the interventricular septum, separates the ventricle. 
And as pointed out before, there are four major valves, two semilunar valves and two AV valves separating the atria from ventricles. Let's look at the blood supply of the heart. Here's the anterior aspect of the heart, and here is the posterior aspect of the heart. This is the left main stem arch coronary artery, and this is the left anterior descending artery supplying the anterior aspect of the left ventricle. The other branch from the left main stem is the left circumflex artery running into left atrial ventricular groove. On the right side, there's a right coronary artery running into the right AV groove. If you look at the posterior aspect of the heart, the right coronary artery actually continues in the posterior atrial ventricular groove and give rise to a branch called the posterior descending artery, which supplies um, the posterior aspect of the heart, running into the uh, posterior interventricular groove. And here is the coronary sinus system. This is the coronary sinus, and the mitocardic vein branch out shortly after the ostium, and the main branch continues, giving rise to the left posterior vein and the great cardiac vein coming anteriorly. On the lateral aspect, it gives rise to lateral, left lateral range and then continue anteriorly as anterior vein. This coronary renal system is important, especially when we perform the left ventricular uh, pacing, also called the cardiac resignalization therapy. For the cardiac disorder, broadly speaking, we can divide it into three groups. The first one is mechanical. There may be muscle pumping ability problem, may be valvular problem, and also there may be pumping uh, problem, just as a coronary artery disease. And electrical problem is also an important cardiac disorder. This includes conduction system disorders and also abnormal rhythms.